Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 6, 2023 Select Board meeting. Uh, we have the board minus Mark present. We have the town manager, the town clerk, members of the public and town. Um, let's stand for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda is we have a brand new town report. And uh, I would like to take time right now and read the dedication. Uh, the town, the town report is dedicated to Neil Hokey Hokinson. The Berwick Psych Board is honored to dedicate this year's town report in memory of Neil Hokey Hokinson. For Berwick's residents, the transfer station is a community hub and an important stop on the errand list. Hokey was a, the longtime prominent smiling face of the Berwick transfer station and always lent a helpful hand to the Berwick community. Hokey wore many hats in his lifetime, having spent 20 years serving the United States Air Force, 23 years working for the Navy, uh, Navy Yard, and in the last 17 years serving the town of Berwick. He was an active member of the Car Club and greatly enjoyed the time he spent with his fellow members sharing their love of classic vehicles. He was a regular at Mayo's, mainly local Yolks restaurant, for years, and everyone knew him. Hokey was the, a kind and caring man and loved his family and his community. Hokey will be deeply missed by all who knew him and loved him. Um, yes, Hokey was a very long-standing fixture of the town. Everybody seemed to know him. Everybody ran into him on a regular basis. Uh, and uh, always in a great mood. Always great to see him come down and help us out. Um, so at this time, I'd like to have the town manager here present the uh, town report to members of uh, Hokie's family. Um, and uh, here's the town report. Um, yeah, just it's uh, an honor to dedicate this year's town report to him. Uh, great man, a great public service. Tell him to go back. <laughs> James, go back. You know that he's got photos. You know let's take a photo. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> You're the pose. <laughs> You're good. Terrific. I'm going to do that. <laughs> we greatly appreciate you guys coming down and accepting the report on Hokie's behalf. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I'd just like to you know, you know, say a little bit about Hokie. Is, uh, we had a lot of fun over the years. Don't joke them back and forth. Is my first year as a chairman on the board here is uh, he was down here for some presentation or something and when it was his turn I said Neil it's your turn and no response no. Nope. Neil no nope. uh, hokey said, oh that's me <laughs> so, <laughs> is, uh, I don't I, I didn't know his name was hope was Neil for the longest either. time <laughs> so is, uh, is he was always a joy to be around so yes and he definitely will be missed Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. First, we have the approval of the meeting minutes from our May 23rd, 2023 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second them. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Uh, first, public comment. Does anybody wish to make a public comment? I will close the public comment. We have a public hearing for the adult use marijuana store and cultivation facility, for, uh, 468 Portland Street, Herbal Pathways. So we received no um, complaints and there's no active violations. This time I recommend um, waiving the public hearing and approving the application. This is the third, uh, the second time renewing so they've been in front of us three times and not have one violation or complaint on this property. Does anybody wish to speak on this particular matter? All right. Um, 
I will make a motion to approve the renewal for the adult use marijuana store and cultivation facility at 468 Portland Street, Carmel Pathways. And waive the public hearing. And waive the public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Thanks, Becky. <laughs> All right. Um, we have no reports of committees. Uh, department report. Josh Jones, Director of the Recreation Department. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, sir. I'm going to give you all a projected expenditure report for the remaining projects that we have scheduled for the summer. Thank you. <laughs> um, everything is moving along uh, pretty well right now. We had our early uh, spring hiccups. Um, I guess the meeting that I not purposefully missed the last time, I apologize for that me missing that meeting. James kind of gave you a little rundown of uh, the basketball goals. Um, that issue will be resolved. We're hoping this week, next week, um, we got precision involved to do that relocation. He's going to honor uh, a price that he quoted um, last year for it. So we did we did really well there to get those relocated. It's about 20 feet. All four of them need to go about northeast uh, so we don't have to pave into the baseball field, which might not be well for the baseball <laughs> players. <laughs> I think baseball would appreciate it. Um, warning track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could use that. It'd be easier to weed eat if I had a warning track. <laughs> um, I tried to get an update on the playground this week. Mark, our rep, was on the road. That was the words they used. I haven't heard back from him. I, I feel like we're over halfway waiting for the equipment, so we should be within a couple of weeks of receiving all the playground equipment. I talked with uh, Jimmy Guy to do the dirt work, to clear the, the space, the footprint that it's going to go in. Um, doesn't seem like it's very difficult work. We have some irrigation that we'll have to relocate, some valve boxes that are right, right there. Um, very simple work as long as all the stuff in the ground is not brittle and works with the removal and the replacement or the, the new location that we figure out where they need to go. Uh, the power pole, the, that line that's going over, that will be hanging over the playground will need to be removed. We don't want any jungle gymming on a live <laughs> line. No trapeze out of it? No, so I, I don't know how Slack tall. Slack lines? Yeah, we're not quite certain the distance from the top of the highest structure to that line, but we're going to get rid of it anyway. Um, then we're going to go underground with all of our electricity. And then they have to uh, assemble a crew, so even when we get the equipment, we're still at the mercy of them providing a crew to put everything in the ground. But we'll have everything done on our end, um, waiting for them. Um, it is an active park, and so timing that dirt work with the safety of our kids for summer camp and all the, you know, everybody else that's going to be at the park, that's on our mind. We don't want that hole unoccupied for as long as we can, but we do understand people have working schedules, and we'll get it done when we can, but as soon as we can to get that crew up here mobilized. Um, basketball courts will get redone, and then we're going to try to time that with, the tennis court so we have the retaining wall in the tennis court should be started to be built at the end of this month and then when they're done that's about a two-week project and when they're done a fence company is going to come put the posts in for the tennis fence and then we will be able to pave both courts at that time um, and this ten this uh, precision is also going to do the, the tennis net posts. So we'll get that done before paving as well. So we should be able to mobilize and pave in one trip, uh, but we do have to get the retaining wall, the tennis posts in. Um, we're not going to fence the basketball court at this time. Um, we are going to stripe the tennis court at this time. Uh, we do have an option to not stripe the basketball court. Just looking for little places where we can trim some fat off of the expenditures. Um, that was one thing that we mentioned because we can play pickup ball 
Uh, it's a little easier to play pickup basketball without lines than it is to play tennis without lines. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little I bit. Would, I would also agree that it's much easier to play basketball without lines. Yeah, so that's just one area where we look to trim some fat uh, off of the expenditures. We realize we have got quite a bit left to do, um, but we're confident, not 100%, that it'll get done um, when we want it, but we're at the mercy of other people's schedules. So we've got to get our some things done before we can get everybody here at once. But we're co I'm coordinating with everybody. I feel good about it. Um, we closed summer camp registrations. We hit a number, 130, Nine. 139, <laughs> which is more than last year by 20 something. Nice. Exactly 20. Yeah, by 20, awesome. over 20. Um, 18 staff plus Shannon and I, Shannon and I, um, 12 field trips all over the place, which I'm excited to go to. I haven't been to anything. So yeah, I was going to say, how many of those 12 have you been to? I've been so. to zero, so I'm the biggest kid on the trip. <laughs> I'm sure he flew in from Colorado to go to fun town. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. I'll go on all those. Um, we're going to be at the park. We've got our backup plans. Uh, we have our training dates for staff. We have uh, parents' night um, for, for uh, meeting the staff. We'll do that on the 20th and the 21st. Um, shake hands, meet parents, give handbooks out, expectations for parents and kids and behaviors and all that. And let's see, playground summer camp. Uh, dirt work. Pretty much covered everything. Wanted to give you guys an update on what's happening. We should have everything done by the end of summer. Yes. Terrific. Um, I totally agree that if you know, if you're coming up, you know, short on funds, the basketball lines can wait a year if mm -hmm. you need to. Sure. I mean, we can always we can always do that after, right? You know, but if we need the money, we can't unline it. You know, can't, so right. Um, that's I have no problem with that if that's what. If that's the direction you decide to go. Okay. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? So you've been here a few months. How do you like it? I love it. <laughs> been, been to the beach. This is the closest I've ever lived to the beach. So, been there a few times. A little cold. Yeah, yeah. You don't. My kids don't care. Yeah. They're in there with blue lips and teeth chattering. <laughs> it's great, Dad. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got lots of exploring to do. Uh, my, Evan just broke his foot, so that kind of oh, no. <laughs> put us down a little bit. But well, sorry to hear that, but um, I'm glad that everything else is going in the right direction. Yeah, it is positive direction. I feel like we got a little momentum right now. We'll just keep it going. <laughs> Please let us know how summer camp goes. You know, just to keep us up to date. You don't need to come to a full meeting and do a full presentation, but okay. just, you know, if there's problems, let us know so they can be. Uh, Handled. Yep. You know. I, I'm probably going to be there every morning at seven. Uh, I plan on being out the field every day. I do have two trips planned. One is fun. One is not. Um, so we'll get through those in July, and then I'm I'm going to be there 95 percent of the of every day. Awesome. I plan on being a face for all the families to see every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, we don't have any appointments, presentations, uh, unfinished business, amendment to the traffic ordinance. I'll start by saying, you guys can escape if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, are, you have to see it all the time. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, though. <laughs> um, so, went back to Chief Town for a few amendments to the parking ordinance, it escalates it a little quicker to a boot and then towing. Um, I did coincidentally receive a phone call from somebody who said they would file a complaint um, just in general about having um, public property be reserved. So that's something I did, did receive and I said I'd, they, they requested that I would forward that along for today. Um, you know, I, I am looking for approval of this tonight, but I'm thinking, you know, based off that, um, maybe with the condition that 
I'll run this through our legal, get their legal opinion. And what was the complaint specific? Do they work in the area, live in the area? Or are they just mad at the idea of it? Said that they're actually, um, they're a customer of Subway, and one of the tenants came out and was upset at him for parking in you know, their, their spot. So I think based off of that experience, which wasn't a very positive experience, and that's why I heard about it. And mm -hmm. I just think he thinks it's wrong to reserve spaces in a on public property. That's the gist of it. Well, I mean, we have a public parking lot over here that has employee parking in certain places, and there's handicap parking, which is reserved parking for a specific yeah, group of common. people. I don't think that there's any legal basis for which we cannot reserve parking for people who live in the specific well, area. Street. I mean, I lived in when I lived in Portland, you had to get a parking permit to park on the street, you know, on the street, you know, if, if And this yeah. is no different. This is yeah, parking this on is, a street. Yeah. It, it, the only difference is that it's that who can get a par parking permit is limited to the people who live in that area. Right. And oh, at least. and only have those areas to park. Otherwise, because the other parking in the area is time limited. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's any, I, I doubt there would be any legal, illegal basis to challenge it. Yeah. They can be annoyed, but it, it is what it is. So um, I don't I don't think that that's particularly necessary, but I'll give it. The, 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 spaces, the spaces that we're talking about on the, on the back street, the back alley there, um, those those spaces have historically been reserved for the tenants there for more than fifty years that I know of. Um, so there's a his, historical you know precedent set there already. But um, I believe the municipality can restrict the parking, you know, as it sees fit. You know, we have parking for deliveries. We have parking for emergency vehicles. You, designate spots for loading and unloading, so I don't see a problem with it. <clears throat> I mean, even for special events, you can stop mm -hmm. all parking, you know, it's, so I, I, I don't see any specific legal challenge that would, that would harm this, this particular ordinance. Wouldn't hurt to run it past legal, but yeah, it's better be safe than sorry, but is I'm, I'm willing to override legal if they say no. <laughs> That's my feeling on it. As I said, you know, for more than 50 years, I've known that that has been reserved, you know, reserved for the tenants in that area. So um, I don't have a problem with it. But um, I'll make a motion that we accept the changes to the parking ordinance as presented. A second, though. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. So, town manager's report. I have an update on the for the speed tables. Uh, Dobson's fairly easy. Where we put the speed bumps last year, that's where the speed tables can go. Sweet is a little more difficult based because where um, the neighbor doesn't want their <coughs> speed bump right after their property, that'd be a logical place to put it. So it really squeezes putting two on um, Sweetser Street. That would make sense. Yeah. Or without it being too close to an intersection, which makes it difficult for plows. Yeah. If you have a speed bump here to turn the plow. So I don't know if we want to start, start with one in one location and I guess allow the opportunity to engage the resident that doesn't want it in their property and just say, you know, is this what you expected? And try to revisit a second speed bump at that time or do we want to squeeze <clears throat> to it? You know, Sweet Street, the, the, the area you're talking about is less than a quarter of a mile it's probably closer to an eighth of a mile you know, in distance. Um, and we also have um, another street that comes off to the side there, Moore Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so another intersection there. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, you could get away with one, you know, speed bump 
know, centrally located in that area and uh, be more than sufficient. <clears throat> I can't I can't see people, you know, going over a speed table and then accelerating, you know, to 40 or 50 and then coming to the stop sign. You know, I, I just don't see people doing that. You know, so. I can, but I would still agree that one is 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 better than none, obviously, and two that would be if they if they can't be spread out properly, like if there's going to be like one after another, or if they're going to be you know too close to the intersection, too close to the stop sign to make it make sense, then one centrally located is better than anything else. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the thing is just take it back to the residents on the street and say, hey, look, we. We looked at it the best way, and this is what we can do. So we stay. Unless you can change, the, it, unless too. you can change the, yeah, unless you can change your neighbor's mind, you know. Yeah. But also, we're also talking about increased signage as well. Yes. So, yeah. um, child at play, slow. Yeah, signage, those, those like signs that. are in the works of being ordered and yeah, so placed. Hopefully, the whole the whole package yeah. encompassing it will will help. And those, I, um, maybe Scott's going to try to get them in. Um, this month, but if not by July, is that going to come under this current budget or the next budget? It's a um, reserve fund, so either yes. okay. okay. <coughs> Anything else? Same pot. I do have more. Um, one I have. We received word on a um, foreclosed property that someone's looking to pay the back taxes. So I'm looking for a motion to deed 68 Mayflower Lane back to the property owner uh, pending payment of back taxes and fees. Do we have an, uh, an exact amount on that? $8,500, including attorney's fees. $8,500. Okay, that in, does that include it, the attorney's fees? Attorney's fees. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? He's gonna put the money Return it back to them just so they can sell it and co eat break even with the town. Correct? They're paying us for the back back taxes and attorney's fees and then it's theirs. <clears throat> we no longer foreclose on it. We have a lien on the deed because of the taxes. Yeah. We and, and we're gonna release the deed after they pay. Yeah. And then they can do whatever they want with it. Yep. Sell it, fix it, yep. knock it down. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I would make a motion that we could uh, release D, what is it, 826? 68, 68 Mayflower Lane. 68 Mayflower Lane. Uh, uh, to the new owners, once all fees... Back uh, to the same same property owner. Same property owner? Yeah. All right. Uh, to, the, to the original property owner, once all back taxes and fees have been paid. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> also, just, just a note when we're talking about foreclosures, I think the Supreme Court came down with a court case where um, it's relevant to Maine where we can no longer keep the proceeds of any we, profits. Any profits yeah. it has to go back to the property owner. So. Which I also have no problem with. <laughs> makes perfect makes sense, sense anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, route, the Route 4 safety study is uh, in a draft concept, uh, so if anyone is watching this and wants to review it, I can send you a copy. I emailed the board. Um, this includes turn lanes and <coughs> raised center median islands. One of the issues that caused fatalities in the past were people recklessly passing on Route 4. The raised islands will prevent that because it will be curbed possibly some trees and lighting in the middle, and then turn lanes, so right turn lanes and left turn lanes in uh, designated areas by Blackberry Hill Road and Kind Farms Pond Road. Um, so again, it's in draft form. Uh, we've reached out to some of the businesses in the area to mix reviews depending on the segment, so we're still working on massaging that and make it work. Did, did Mark have mixed reviews? <laughs> if you could send me a copy of that, I'd, I'd really like to look at it. Should be in your inbox. In I sent it like an hour yeah. or hour and a half ago. Yeah. Um, last thing I have is with the drainage project from the edge to Salmon Falls River is scheduled for 
um, starting sometime late summer into the fall, depending on what the lead times are. School Street and Sawmill Hill most likely will both need to be closed for four days. And this will be Tuesday through Friday to try to minimize disruption to town hall as much as possible. Um, so there will be ample notice and, and signage posted ahead of time. And uh, just kicking thoughts back and forth between engineers, that will be the best way to help them get across. They're starting at the edge for it's our infrastructure, going all the way across that School Street and Sawmill Hill intersection and getting across to the second half of the Gateway Gas property where the cars are parked. So it's a pretty big expanse. Um, but yeah, that will effectively eliminate flooding on Wilson Street. I don't think we'll ever see, I mean, I won't say ever see, but. I'm gonna say, don't say that. <laughs> I know, we'll get a month, you know, we'll get a month. But it, it, it significantly increases our capacity well into the future. And that's, that completes my report. So we won't see that uh, flooded Main Street ever again? <laughs> Wilson, yeah, that's, Wilson, that's Wilson Street, because they're putting in a, they're upsizing the culvert, and we went from a 48-inch pipe that at one point went all the way down. So you had the 48-inch pipe that went all the way down to a very small pipe before it got to the river. So that would just back up all the way to Wilson Street. Yeah. Now it's a 60-inch pipe all the way coming down. Any questions for the town manager? All right, we have no select board communications. Approval of house payment. We have a payroll warrant number 80 from June 1st, 2023 in the amount of $76,758.32. We have a payroll warrant number 81 from, oh, geez, from June 8th, uh, 2023 in the amount of $78,884.37. And the accounts payable warrant number 82 from June 6th, 2023 in the amount of $1,158,008.61. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Okay. Any further discussion? Discussion. All those in favor? Take care. See that last one's a doozy. Yeah. Uh, new business: MRI Payroll Services. <laughs> You've been waiting long enough. Kudos for official meeting so far. We'll try to keep it that way. Um, so, uh, my name is Christian Pearsall. Um, this is Carrie Sawyer. We're both from Municipal Resources. Um, uh, we've been providing services on and off for the town of Berwick, I think, since 2002, according to our file. Although it may have been earlier than that, I'm not sure. Sometimes the files pre-2000 get a little squirrely, but a long time. So, um, we are a services company, first and foremost. Um, we um, are... Uh, in some regards, starting a new line of business. This is sort of a new line of business, except we've been doing payroll and finance services for pretty much as long as MRI exists. Um, what we found in the past couple of years, um, actually, frankly, since we hired Carrie, what, four, three or four years? Three, three years, three years ago. Yeah. Um, payroll has become uh, a type of service that is more and more complex. There's more and more legal requirements, more and more state requirements, federal reporting. Uh, state retirement reporting it's become more and more complex and we're getting more and more requests we have been getting more and more requests to basically do payroll services only for communities um, and so we had been doing that primarily in new hampshire and, and like i said we've been doing it all along all of our finance consultants have done that um, about a year ago we were approached actually by uh, harris local government which is the parent company of trio trio is the your fund accounting software yes. um, that you use i think they're in something like three quarters of the state of uh, main municipalities use TRIO. Um, they approached us about basically being a services wing for their payroll, um, payroll product because they were finding that people were going out to um, commercial payroll companies to do municipal payroll 
with fairly unsuccess, with not a lot of success. Um, and we found the same thing in New Hampshire, where a lot of our clients who would outsource their payroll to folks like uh, Paychex, ADP, they do a fine job. But some of the uniqueness of municipal payroll doesn't really work well for the systems they use. Um, I'll try to keep this brief. But I sort of see it in two areas. One is the software that they use is typically not designed for municipal payroll and, and sort of your DPW guy who might be a call firefighter who may also work in the rec you know, department on the weekend and, and all of these wages get distributed and what's subject to main retirement and what's not and sort of the uniqueness of how municipalities work. And the payroll software a lot of times has difficulty with that. Um, and then the other piece is the, the staff in these sort of more commercial or uh, private sector payroll companies just don't have the experience on the municipal side and they don't understand how municipalities work. Um, so that's sort of, um, I think what's a little bit unique about our proposition is that um, we have folks that have been working in municipalities. Carrie's been working in municipalities for? 21 years, three with you, and then I also worked for the DOT for six before that. So it's almost 30 years of municipal and public sector yep. payroll um, and uh, the software I think one of the unique propositions is that we'll be using and we're actually uh, part of our agreement with Harris is we're going to be using their software in New Hampshire as well for all of our clients um, and so it's basically we're going to be using you know the proposition we're going to be using the town software um, it's, it's made for municipal payroll. Um, it's set up in the way it should be, and if there's anything that needs to be adjusted, um, that's sort of something that we can handle, but everything is sort of teed up and ready to go as far as how to handle payroll. Um, the other nice piece that um, we see that is sort of separate from an out, a fully outsourced, like, a, like an ADP or a paychecks, is because we're using software that the municipality uses for fund accounting, that tie is already there. There's no sort of double entry, data entry, imports, exports of information. It's all sort of integrated and ready to go um, right off the bat. So we, we see that as a big plus. Um, we've heard just positive comments on that concept. So um, that's that's quickly about us. Carrie could talk for weeks about payroll, and <laughs> I, I know she's, bore you. <laughs> she's reviewed. Uh, you know, we we had a meeting previously, and she's reviewed sort of your your payroll system and your. Um, you know. I would like to also say the other uniqueness about what we do is we're not just processing payroll, we're also looking at your processes, meaning if I was to see anything and I thought that we could streamline something better on that, we would make recommendations on that. Um, some examples were in one town, we created new timesheets to simplify that process. Um, if there are policies we think that are need to be updated, we make recommendations within that. So we're not just actually entering the numbers and spitting out checks. We're, we're looking at your processes, each payroll, to see if there's change that can be made. And we're also having a relationship with your finance director to discuss those things. And keeping up on the changes that are required yeah. and sort of, you know, that, that becomes our responsibility, knowing what what rules are coming down the road, what, what um, you know, main retirement, state state rules, et cetera. So mm -hmm. sort of the, the, the burden is shift on us to be aware of all that rather than, than the finance office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy to answer questions or I can keep talking for another hour if you'd like. But <laughs> so if we transition to your system, it's 100% direct deposit, correct? Uh, Nope. So we would use we would use. Well, you guys are 100% direct deposit, aren't you? Or oh, no. Almost. Almost. So 99.9. So, <laughs> right? um, it's always that. So we we would use your system. So we would actually be accessing your system, um, and we've talked technically about how we do that. But um, basically, um, if there were any paychecks that would be issued, they basically we we would process the payroll, complete the payroll, and then at the end of that process, if there are checks to print, you know, we could print them. The manifest, you know, you could print the manifest. We're not, um, we don't want to be FedExing or overnighting, you know, two checks and hope they get there in time. Um, that's sort of the nice thing about the system, about the integration, is that um, there is a little bit of limited work on, on this end to, you know, to print that manifest um, and a couple of other little pieces that, that would be, but um, we can't guarantee 100% direct deposit, both legally and otherwise. <laughs> Are you using a VPN to secure the information from one to the other? So we would either, um, depending on how um, we, so, so your system is a little unique in how it's set up because you're using Trio Web. 
but the town hosts, you know, the town is like the web server for the software as mm -hmm. opposed to Trio Web, which would be hosted by Trio or by Harris themselves. So we would use most likely either um, a VPN into your town to access the, the basically the Trio Web or a remote secure connection that like we do. We have about 50 towns that I have a remote connection that's like a dual factor authentication. We've got a, a credentials on your network essentially as though we're a, we're a subcontractor of the town. So um, the security is not um, the data. All of the data would be would be held in your system on your servers. Um, we would just be accessing that information essentially. Is there any uh, is there any warranty or anything about uh, data breaches or access if you're portaling in? Um, I don't. I. I don't think that we would have. I mean, I guess I'd have to get back to you on that. Um, we are, would be no different than any other vendor who has access to your systems, which you know multiple vendors do. I would assume. Um, so yes, we would be accessing. We would have a pri like the agreement would have a privacy um, agreement. So in other words, you know, we would be access to you know information like people's payroll. People's right. Payroll. I mean, you're talking about employee. Employee, um, correct. Personnel files. You're talking correct. about, you know, payroll yeah. files. Right. You'll be, you'll be. You hire information. Correct. Yeah. It would be, would be PHI, private yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So we, I mean, we have, we have access to that in multiple towns now. It's not, it's, it would be no different than, um, I guess, the, if we were, I, I'd have to look and see. I mean, it would be a legal, it would be a legal question. Mm -hmm. um, typically, our agreements have a privacy policy. Um, if we were, I can tell you we're insured through more insurance than one could ever imagine, unfortunately, <laughs> as a business owner. Um, it's, it's not, um, the, everything that we do is through um, very publicly used uh, remote connections like a log me in, which is secure and encrypted, for example. Um, so we would basically work with the town to see what, what, their, what your IT vendor is comfortable or what your IT company is comfortable with as far as access to the system. But but we would have access to employee information, that's correct, um, and we would have access to PHI, basically. You know, if, if an employee has health insurance, that's technically PHI, so we would have access to that. Um, but it is kept very, I mean, it's, it's nothing is kept on our systems. It's all kept in your system. And you must serve it here. Correct, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, one, and one other thing, where this kind of gets in the weeds a little bit, but um, we would not have access to your banking at all, um, and we would not escrow your funds. Um, so some companies that do outsource payroll, they would actually pull the funds out of your bank, escrow everything, and then they do the direct deposit. Um, we would prepare everything. We would get the direct deposit file and any ACH payments to vendors that you guys would have, but we would not actually go into your bank and post that. That would be something that the town would do. We wanted to make that line because we didn't want to have access, basically, we didn't want to escrow funds, which just sort of gets into a whole other area of, of um, sort of regulation. Um, but then we didn't want to, you know, sometimes it said, oh, can't you just post the file to our bank? No, we don't, we don't want to be responsible for logging into your bank and having a FOB and all that kind of stuff. So okay. we, we are sort of conscious of that. So the fee I have here is 24, uh, two fifty. For a year, is that what it is? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And it's charged monthly. Correct. So just about two thousand dollars a month. Yeah. I mean, we can do it however we want, but typically that's how that's how towns like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, does the fee adjust depending on how many employees we have? So, so this is something that we kind of I, I don't really like about a lot of outsourced um, payroll providers. A lot of their fees are transactional. So. You get a, a fee for every employee you have. You get a fee for every check you issue. You get a fee for every W-2 you issue. Um, you get a fee if you have to do a manual check because somebody's leaving and, and they have to be paid out on this certain day. And you sort of get docked all these fees. Um, I'm much happier with a flat fee approach. So what we basically did is we asked, asked a lot of questions of your finance office and kind of projected what we think would be an appropriate fee um, and sort of did a flat fee so we're not nickel and diming you, you know, well, we could do a manual checks, but it's going to cost you nineteen ninety five plus, you know, an overnight fee of four, you know, fourteen dollars, et cetera. It's just a flat fee for basically routine, everyday payroll processing and, and anything that comes up. 
the and then obviously yep. your the amount of employees you have changes seasonally right so you could have 75 employees in the winter time but that may I don't know how many seasonal employees you have for summer staff but for some towns that could double so if we were to charge you by employee think of it that way as well yeah so so that we, we took all that into consideration and sort of came up with that fee based on some transactional cost but we just we don't want to be in the habit of billing like every time you talk to us it's like click 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 you know you're getting you're, we're charging you um feels nothing against law firms but we sort of feel like <laughs> we don't want to be that way so um the the additional fee carrie can probably say if something comes up that's not routine because there's an additional cost um you know in one town for example one it, it was they needed us to go back and do research um taxes hadn't been paid for instance for a couple of years before we had even gotten in there so they had the additional fee was the cost of our research and us um, providing them in, the information and being the liaison with like the IRS and also we did it with like main state taxes so that would be what the additional charges would be it, it was, you know looking back in other words they this kind of cropped up when we got there yeah. and started providing services and like oh we have this problem can you figure it out and deal with it but the routine like you know you calling us calling us about questions about payroll normal back and forth you know that that would all be covered in the in the, the flat and mm -hmm. cost, so if I'm understanding this right employees departments would upload their timesheets into the system you would process all hours worked any vacation any accrued time anything of that spit back uh, a register to the town and the town would actually pay that that's what you're saying so, so the town would be accessing the bank to pay that correct correct okay it's all going to be done on our system so we don't have access that's to run all of our own reports right. once they are finished so everything we're doing is live there's no lag time so as as we're processing as we're doing all of that if there are any questions we <laughs> would talk to her in real time and then once everything's done she, we would let the department know finance department know and then that's when they would push the button to pay the employees and then they would provide you guys with the reports and I think you know the, the, the manifest that you approved for the two payrolls tonight it would be exactly the same right you, you, would, you know we're, we're we're reviewing things we're, we're checking to make sure we're in compliance you're in compliance with everything um, making sure everything's correct new employees make sure they're set up the correct way for all of the reporting requirements and things like that um, so yeah so it's in it all of the the expenses that, that hit the general ledger or the, the um, budgeting portion of your fund accounting system you know that's a that's a seamless integration because we are using your system so so you'd be setting up new employees um, so I think we, we talked about that a little bit I think we don't have a our, our approach is typically what's going to work best for towns um, and so we don't have a one-size-fits-all necessarily I mean, the question came up when we spoke previously like who, who talks to you know if there's a question about payroll does the department head call us does the department head call the finance office first how do we handle this um, and we talked about a couple of options each town handles things so differently I mean we talked about potentially having like a Berwick payroll email that would be MRI that could be copied um, whatever sort of the best way to handle it I think um, I don't remember how we talked about doing new employees be honest with you we haven't so we haven't made those decisions yet that's a discussion that we would have um, as far as if they want to provide us with that information and we enter it but one of the things I suggested they would still enter it and we would be the double check in other words they would still provide us with the information and we would make sure that the setup is correctly but like Christian said every town is different as far as how much control they still want on some of those processes with like setting up new employees setting up direct deposits updating um, w4s so that that would be a discussion that we would have before we started it t typically it's kind of a, a flow of how how the finance office works and what's the most you know what what's the best service that you can provide for your employees um, and and sometimes that's not 
reaching out to us as the first, you know, line of defense or as the first thing. Um, you know, I think that there's, you're, you, it's not like you're completely not going to be involved in it. I no, guess we're the gonna point, be, right? We're gonna be involved. Right, and so it's it's not, we're, it's. We have some talents that they send everything direct right. to us, mm -hmm. and we do A through Z. Yeah. Yep. And but we're not, we, yeah. yeah, no, I'm sorry, okay. we're not, we're not the HR office. Uh, we may look at things from an HR perspective or mm -hmm. from a policy compliance perspective, but we're not your HR department, and we wouldn't be, you know, that's not the, the role. It would be payroll processing and ensuring that, that everything is correct in the payroll process. Any other questions from our eye? Is uh, Lisa, could you step to the yeah. mic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been in discussion for a while. I, I, I've known the last three or four people have done payroll for the town here, mm -hmm. and I don't think any one of them ever enjoyed it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's not that we don't enjoy it. It's just, well, especially now, because there was three of us trained just recently, and then, you know, Lisa retired and Cole moved away, <coughs> and... Now it's just Cassie and I, and we're trying to, I'm trying different ways to try to save the child money. And with if being a weekly payroll is kind of, it's inconvenient because we have to always be there. One of us always has to be there. We had an instance where it was lucky that we had, um, three people trained to do payroll recently because one person was in the hospital and one person had a death in the family. And we don't have that anymore. So um, at this point, we can hire another person or we can outsource, and it's cost-effective to outsource. I, I agree. I, I, th I think it sounds like it's a good good idea to go through this. Um, as I said, it's always always seems to have been not necessarily a struggle, but it was never easy for the you know, payroll to be completed consistently all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, is, you know, for the price of a couple thousand dollars a month, it seems like it's um, you know, well worth it to me. So you just said something, though. So if you do this, you're not going to replace Cole's position. Why not? Uh, are we still going with the weekly payroll? Yeah, yes, okay. I, I believe. I mean, unless you want to change it. I mean, I, I believe in weekly payroll. I, <laughs> I think I, I, when I set up my business, I did a weekly payroll because oh, I, I tell the employees that you're going to change it from yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> no, I just you know, talk to the union. Yeah, no, I, I, <laughs> I've always preferred weekly payroll to, to bi weekly just because you know some people do live paycheck to paycheck, and two weeks is a long time yeah. to go without a paycheck, mm -hmm. but um. Yeah. So by enabling these services, we are basically eliminating at least one position yes. in the town. Okay. Yes. And we're going to save approximately, if the person had, if uh, if we hired a full time employee who had full benefits, we, our cost savings is like approximately sixty two thousand, sixty two thousand dollars a year to outsource. That, that seems perfectly accurate to me. Yep. <clears throat> Is there anything else you want to add to the presentation that we just given? Um, not really. I I mean, we're still we still want to be involved. We want to. Um, Cassidy does all the processing of the payroll now, and I check everything unless she's out, and then I do the payroll. Um, and I think that just having that relief of knowing that someone else is there to do it is going to help us tremendously. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. So, James, are you looking for a motion tonight? Yes. I'll make a motion that we enter into a one year contract with Municipal Resources Inc. to take over our managed payroll services for the sum of $24,250. For this next year. Second that one. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 
We'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Can we see ourselves at her? Yeah. 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 No, you got to stay. Hey, you're on discretion. <laughs> no, you guys have that's, to stay. That's what it takes. Also. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're on the Thank payroll you. now. You're going to stay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, personal property write-off request. This is an account um, that this business moved into another unit on this property at 398 School Street that they're subleasing. And the equipment is being taxed to the subletter. Therefore, this tax is a duplication. So I'm seeking approval to write off the amount of $503.31 for account 853. So to be clear, somebody else already paid the $503. Yeah. And this is just a duplication of that. Yep. I move that we accept the town manager's recommendation and write off the $503.31 for account 353. Second. 853. Sorry. Uh, I'll second that. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. All yeah, right. Linda with her seven. <laughs> Name baseball field. You're up. Hello. Hi there. I'm Shannon Rogers um, in the recreation department. Um, it was brought to our attention that there was um, there were residents who were wondering and trying to figure out how to dedicate a memorial to a resident who put a lot into a program. Um, Denny, Dennis Moore, he passed away on May 27th um, at home after a short illness. Back in 92, um, Dennis, Denny, along with Jimmy Hale and a couple others, split from Summersworth Berwick Baseball to form Berwick Youth Baseball. Um, so that was back in 92. They couldn't use the fields that Denny and the crew were constructing by hand, by their manual labor going down to do it because they, they just had to get things moving. They did the fields, the infields. They had Tuckahoe Turf, donated all of the turf field to do the field. Um, the fire department went down and watered to keep the grass growing. Um, Denny was a, a, a huge part of that when he started Berwick Youth Baseball. They had nothing. They had no money. They had nothing in savings. Um, him and a few, probably six or seven people on the board put in their own money. They um, enlisted the help of some local businesses such as Collins Sports Center, uh, Devin Dukes, to do their hats, their jerseys, equipment for them. Um, and it was basically on a pay us when you can basis. So that's how Berwick Youth Baseball got started. Um, they weren't able to use the field in 92 because it was still under construction. It was growing, it was molding as they would say. Um, they utilized the Huzzy School field and they utilized the, what is now known as the Berwick Middle School field to play Berwick Youth Baseball. In 1993, they started using the field at Memorial Field so I really didn't notice it until today, but this is their 30th anniversary of Berwick Youth Baseball, which is now called Noble Youth Baseball. Um, while Denny was the president for Berwick Youth Baseball, he also worked part-time with Lisa Hustis, who was then our uh, director of rec recreation. Um, he mowed fields, he watered fields, he maintained the buildings, he maintained the grounds, and he was very I guess anal would be a good word you would use for it, <laughs> about keeping those fields the way that people wanted them to be played on. Um, he used his own money. He used everybody else's money. And I'm sure with everything you hear about people, um, there's always going to be bad things that come, al come along when people start talking good about people as well. Uh, we just want to remember that Denny was a... Um, that he spent countless hours at the field mowing, organizing the teams and equipment, stocking the concession stand. He was a umpire for baseball, youth baseball and youth softball for years. He was also a basketball uh, ref for years. Um, so with that being said, 
people have tried to come up with a name. Um, somebody had said, let's name the whole field after him. And after speaking to some people higher up than me and, you know, some town employees, some town residents, why not just name one of the baseball fields? We got a baseball A, we got a baseball B, we got a minor league field, a major league field. Um, so we would like to dedicate the minor league field, which is the field closer to the Sullivan Street parking lot. That's, mm -hmm. That was his baby. That's where he turned it in. There was a, a warning track out there by the fence. He installed the fence, the, the fence that is there now. Um, so we'd like that to be some names that came up um, out of all of the names that came up. Um, the Denny Moore Diamond minor league field is what a lot of people were referring to. Um, and we, we just don't know where to go from here. We thought we'd bring it to the select board, see what they had to say, um, and see what your thoughts were. I did speak with um, his daughter, Katie, and she spoke with her mom. I asked them permission before I did this to see if they were okay with the thought of naming a field after him was something. And they both agreed that it would be nice to for something that he's done for the town for so so many years. I, I just have to say, you know, I, I wasn't involved in the baseball because my son was a <coughs> soccer player, but um, it is for a couple of decades, it was, you, you couldn't talk about Burke baseball without mentioning Denny Moore. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as Shannon said, he was always there. He was always working there. Um, you know, he dedicated his time, you know, tremendously over the years. Um, I have, don't have a problem with naming the field. Um, you know, when it first came up, as I thought about it, and, and we don't have a policy for anything like that, mm -hmm. um, is um, I, I, I would be against naming, renaming the whole recreation right. area, but I don't have a problem with naming a field after him. As, um, I, think, I think it would be fitting to do something like that. I, I would, the only thing, I don't have a problem at all with naming the field after him, but I would go back to your comment about this will lead to the next field, to the next field, to the next one. So before we name this field, um, like again, I have no problem with it, is we ought to draft some sort of policy that just states that if somebody would like to make a recommendation, it, what format it should be in, should it get out before the board, is there a vote? And then, you know, how long is the field named for? Is it in perpetuity? Just, there just should be some format around it because otherwise two years from now, someone else is going to come here and go, I want to name that same field the Dendalo Farm, you know, field. And you, we're going to be like, well, what? So um, I, I like the idea and I think it's great, but we probably should draft some sort of policy that way, once we do it, it sticks and it's done right. I can work on that. My view is, I, I, I certainly have no objection to, to ded dedicating the field uh, as well. Um, and um, I kind of feel like, I mean, the name change in spirit is, is always great, but um, are they, is anybody requesting that we put out like a plaque or signage or a monument or anything or just no nope. just just want the name change yeah and we we think on the building right now when you walk up to the building you have field a with an arrow to the left and you have field b with an arrow to the right maybe changing field b sign to say what that is yeah. um i think that's all we would do i think yeah. just the sign yeah where it says field a is it field a no nope, b so wherever it says field b we would just like that. Yeah, and over time, as maps get drawn yeah. with the mm -hmm. playgrounds and things like that, the name will slowly get added on mm -hmm. to where it becomes recognizable. And I also um, think that if the uh, noble ba baseball wanted to make a you know a plaque or something like mm -hmm. that, yeah. um, the town would certainly accept that as a gift for the for the yep. field as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, which you could also add to your policy <laughs> <laughs> as well. Um, and again, I have no objections to it being named that way. I do think that we should probably have uh, one public hearing about it just to hear if there's any strong yep. objections to it, strong feelings about it. Yep. You know, I again, I don't imagine that there's going to be a large public outcry against it. Probably yeah. 
more likely to have a bunch of people come in here speaking for it. Right. But um, yes, I think that a, a public hearing would be appropriate just before we make a, a vote on it. I, I have to say that, that my son used to play baseball, All-Stars, Berwick Youth Baseball. Denny's the only one that had ever kicked him out of a baseball game <laughs> as an all-star player. So he's he was never my favorite person. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there's there's trivial issues like, you know, like he didn't see that one strike. Right. And then there's a tr there's serious issues where like, you know, right. you know, you don't even know what could come up. So yep. just one public hearing to make sure that we're 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 given the public the opportunity to speak about it before okay. we just make a decision. All right. But um, and I'll give James time to write up a policy for us to to peruse, to peruse as well. Yep. Okay. That's a good idea. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Thank, thank you, guys. And James, while you're at it, no, looking at policies like that, uh, drop drop another one for the benches. Oh uh, yeah. Facing the benches. Yes. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. All right, we have no quick claim deeds, no abatements, no public for a second public comment, no executive session, <clears throat> other business not agenda items. Uh, a week from today is the town election. We have school board, select board, and the entire town budget itemized for approval. Uh, if you have any interest in those particular issues, I highly recommend that you either get down to town hall or the, the can you still early vote or is that close? You can still come get do early voting or come down seven days from now, June 13th, and vote 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The town hall will be closed. So. Well, the, customer the, service. Yeah, customer service, service will be closed. <laughs> the, 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 the voting will be open. So please come down and participate in our democracy um, and represent the town. Uh, does anybody else have anything to add? No. no. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Good night. <laughs>